Crown Plaza Hotel in Nashua, New Hampshire, home of the Liberty Forum. One of the biggest events for the Free State Project. Chris Lawless, the organizer of Liberty Forum? One of the organizers, yeah. Well, what, what's your official title with this I, thing? Yeah. Ron Paul's Freaking Giant is my official title. No, but I'm, I guess, the lead organizer uh, for the Liberty Forum. Okay, so for anybody that doesn't know what Liberty Forum is. Liberty Forum is, is a chance for people to come visit New Hampshire, to check out um, what the Free State Project is doing here in New Hampshire, and we wanted to do it kind of like the opposite of Port Fest. So instead of camping, it's at a hotel. Instead of summer, it's in the winter. So it's kind of like the winter festival of Port Fest. Um, great way for people to meet uh, residents of New Hampshire, whether they moved or natives, and um, we just want people to come and hear great speakers, great panels, and the best part is the networking. So who are some of the speakers, not necessarily that are here this year, but the big names that have been here in the past? Probably the biggest name would be Ron Paul. Um, John Stossel has been here. We've had Senator Sununu when he was the Senator of New Hampshire. He spoke. Um, Bernard von Nothaus, the, the Liberty Dollar fame. He, he's been a speaker. Um, we had, I believe we've had a lot of speakers, wow. Um, Judge Napolitano spoke a couple years ago. So we've had a lot of big names and then we have a lot of like up and coming people too. So it's a kind of a great mix that we have of the different types of speakers. So who are some of the, I, I guess, up and comers? Well, I, I think one of the things we kind of tried is to get the kind of the unknown, not necessarily the unknown, but kind of the, the different to unusual, because we don't want the same speakers every year, you get kind of bored. Right. So we have Essam, who's the guy who made those great little... Um, uh, the drone posters. The drone posters. He's going to be here speaking. We have Steve Cooksey, who was the one who was told he had to take his blog down about paleo dieting. Um, so he's going to be a speaker this year. So it's, we have like a great mix, and then we always have panels about what's going on here in New Hampshire for people to learn about that type of stuff. So, all right, thanks a lot, Brent Vinat from School Sucks mm -hmm. Podcast. What is Liberty Forum? Oh well, Liberty Forum is one of the big events in New Hampshire. One of the two, and soon to be one of the three. I understand that they're adding one in Keene, which is very cool. But you know, this is more formal. I like Liberty Forum. You know, it's more. There's hotels. That's a big. That's a big plus. It's it's more civilized than Pork Fest. It's a little tamer than Pork <laughs> Fest. So, um, I uh, first time I ever gave a speech, public speech, was at Liberty Forum in 2010. So, I like this event a lot. And what is the School Sucks project? School Sucks is a call-in show, a YouTube channel, a podcast, and a, a, a web community that. Uh, is pretty much what we're trying to do, I would say, in a nutshell, is separate schooling from education, right? Two totally different things, pretty much the opposite of each other, real education versus, you know, what happens in the government schools. So that's our goal. That's what we do. Yeah, never let So you hate children. I love children. That's why, that's why I'm so opposed to school. That's, that's a good interview question, though. So you're against school, so you hate children. You could work for one of those news networks, questions like that. That's a, that was a good one. Um, no, what was I going to say? There was something important. Um, the Never let uh, schooling get in the way of education. Yep. I'll actually give you a... Uh, we've got flyers. Thousands of them. And that's what they say on them. That's the quote. So, yeah. And the website one more time? SchoolSucksProject.com. That's it? Do you want to ask me any questions that aren't related to this? Do you have any fun questions? probing questions. All right, you've got three minutes to talk about whatever you want. No, no, it doesn't work like that. You have to give me a prompt. Or we can just stop now if you want. Okay, if hold you're on. tired of holding hold on. the tripod. No, I, 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 can think, I can think of just a very obscure off-the-wall question. Sure. Free State Project. Mm -hmm. You're a mover. Mm -hmm. Do you like being called a porcupine or a free stater? I don't like any, I don't like those labels. My, my story's actually interesting because I'm from New Hampshire and I left here in 1995 to go to college and was gone until 2007, then joined the Free State Project and moved back. But I've never, I don't like it when people try to collectivize, you know, like say, oh, you're one of them. I don't, I don't, I don't like that. I've never, I've never called myself either. Um, and I consider myself more of a, you know, an ally. Davi Barker from Silver Circle, also the author of Voluntary Islam and other essays. The newest Liberty book and what I believe 
will possibly be the best-selling Liberty book published outside of a major publisher. Davi, yeah. you're here at the Liberty Forum. Mm -hmm. What brought you here? A plane. No, uh, I've been coming, this is my second year here. Uh, this is the first year where I've had like actual responsibilities, so I am now, I've got a table and I've got some hours I've got to work and stuff like that. Um, but I'm now a full-time agorist, so this is work for me now. So that's what brought me here. You're wearing a Bitcoin badge? Yeah, this is uh, the Bitcoin badge, and I've also got the, uh, the Voluntarist V badge. That's one of my projects is shinybadges.com. There's also a Shire Society badge and a black and gold flag pin badge. And I add to new designs all the time, so. That's okay, so two quick questions. Yeah. What are Bitcoins? What are Bitcoins? And what is voluntarism? All right. Uh, Bitcoin is cash for the internet. It's a cryptographic commodity that people use as a currency online. It's uh, So it's like PayPal. Yeah, it's like PayPal, except there is no dollars involved. It exists entirely on the internet, um, with the exception of some physical things people have embedded them in. Um, and uh, it's not tied to any government or any central bank. It, it is. It is regular. It's not even really regulated. It's. Uh, it's um, essentially created by a complex mathematical algorithm that I don't understand. But the idea is that you can't inflate it, and so because it has scarcity, it has value. Because it has utility, it has value. And so uh, it fulfills the criterion of money better than any of the paper that government. And print. what are the criteria for money? What are the criterion for money? Okay, um, it should have a uh, intrinsic value or a utility. Uh, it should have a sort of a price determined by supply and demand rather than by fiat. Uh, and it should be both abundant enough to be commonly accessible, but also scarce enough to have a value. Um, some people boil it down to just uh, stability and liquidity, but those are the, the basic ones. Um, voluntarism is a philosophy of property rights and non-aggression, which essentially states that the uh, use of violence is not an appropriate tool to solve non-violent problems. Uh, so you could use it in a, uh, an excess of self-defense, but you, uh, you can't do things like threaten your neighbor to mow his lawn. Pete Air from copblock.org. I uh, left from Keene, New Hampshire, Keene in the Shire in, uh, in mid-July, or mid-January, and then I went 4,000 miles like from, from Keene south to North Carolina, west to Kansas City, and then northeast back through like Ohio, I went to Detroit, and then uh, New York and back. So I had a couple dozen stops along that route. And, uh, you know, a lot of meetups, the, the primary objective was to help facilitate connections with folks local and then also to have a conversation about police accountability and inject into that conversation the message of complete liberty. So to try to get folks to realize, like, hey, badges don't grant extra rights and, you know, as long as you don't hurt anybody, you shouldn't be uh, afraid, you should act confidently and things like that. So. And then for anybody that's not aware, when you say police accountability, mm -hmm. uh, what do you mean by that? I mean, uh, for me personally, I mean that uh, I think theft is wrong. At the end of the day, police, as it's currently structured, operates on stolen money. So I think that uh, it, it's an it's a institution that has a lot of perverse incentives, so there's never going to be accountability had in that system. So well, I mean, I grew up in Massachusetts, so I'm here at Liberty Forum to try to see what we can do to stop the terrible effects of all the exodus from Massachusetts people coming here. After screwing up Massachusetts, they're going to come here and screw up New Hampshire. No way, baby. We're going to stop that from happening. This is too great of a state to let these interlopers come in here and screw it up. So do you plan on one day moving to New Hampshire? Uh, I don't know. It depends on my family. Like, I don't know. But I'm doing what I can from where I am, and I promote the Free State Project whenever I can. Taryn Lupo, my favorite person. author of... Pirates of Savannah, One Nation Under Blood, and some other some stuff. Other stuff. Some but other Stash books. Your Swag, which was what, one of the first books you did, I think? Yeah, I think I was one of the first. I think. Uh, so how long have you been active in like the Liberty stuff and an author and I'm coming up whatnot. about 20 years as being an activist. I started really young at 88 with the Ron Paul campaign. But um, other than that, uh, I really only got serious about writing about five years ago. And actually, Daryl helped me out. He was the one who pretty much introduced me how to self-publish, and I ran with it. 
you know, I did a lot, so kudos to Daryl. So, what is your most successful book? By far, Pirates of Savannah, my first book out of the gate, was, still sells really well. Um, I think my new book, One Nation Under Blood, is my best book, and it's got great ratings, but I'm still trying to push the sales. Right now, as a consumer, uh, a lot of our health choices, uh, what, what are available to us, have been decided by an external regulatory board called the FDA, the CDC, uh, the, the federal government in general. It's right, like, this right. is what's legal, this is what's not. Uh, and I like to trust people's own uh, intuition as far as what they choose to use for their health. And so you think that like holistic and homeopathic sort of treatments should not be regulated by the government? Uh, I don't know about regulate, we have some regulation, but not necessarily making it illegal. And that's where the regulation comes in, where the FDA stamps something as being illegal based on politics and, and right. money versus whether it works or not. And that's where it's messed up, where... Well, the first regulations of medicine came about to keep out the holistic and homeopathic sure. and treatment. Based according to them, where you as a consumer, me as a consumer, why can't I choose that for myself? Right. You know what I'm saying? And, that, and that's my whole soapbox. Form consent, give me a choice. We're not giving a choice because we're not giving all the information. You know, so part of my job is to help disseminate information so that you as a consumer, you can make a better choice for your health based on what the government official recommendations are. Garrett Ian, Free Concord, what are you doing here in uh, Nashua? I'm here to attend the 2013 Liberty Forum. What specific part of Liberty Forum is it that you are here to attend? Well, it's the combination of people and ideas brought together to see different sorts of ideas represented from different ends of the libertarian and anarchist spectrum. And every year I like to see the progression of ideas and where different people are going with things. It's a good meetup. It's a good network. This is the Bitcoin machine. Did you take this? <laughs> you put in your worthless FRNs and it sends Bitcoins to your phone. Okay, so is somebody going to use this thing? So hard. I don't have a phone. I have a phone. I have a phone. I have a phone. You can put the dollar in. He's going to get your Bitcoin. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, you're going to donate it to his campaign. Three Bitcoins. Yeah, you're going to donate it. Next year or something, whatever. Jerry's very, very, Jerry's, yeah, Jerry's very generous. Well, just take it, just take five. Yeah. Wait, I hit wait, this button wait, wait, first. How many times have you done this, uh, Darren? I don't know. You check the address? Okay. Yeah, one, five, it's ready to go. Okay, we're good. Please insert a bill. Now just put it in. Get rid of a worthless Abe Lincoln. Yeah. And then I get some credits on a thing. Okay, so now it's saying you've inserted $5. You're going to buy 0 0.161 Bitcoin. Let me hit the button. Go ahead. May I? Okay. Please do the honors. All right. Now it's sending you the Bitcoins on the Bitcoin network. And there it is. It shows a QR code of your transaction. If you want to check on it, you can you can scan that. Uh, it also tells you that's the price you paid, uh, that's the amount of Bitcoins you got, and that's the And I, ha I can verify that they're on their way to me on my phone. How are you doing? Chatting with Ferb, who is the executive director of Freedom Book. Well, what is your title? I, I call myself the managing editor. And you can buy more. The managing editor by of that, Freedom I mean, Book. Barely Club. managing. Just barely hanging on by the skin of my teeth over here. Bro. And Freedom Book Club chooses a book of the month every month from online votes. And then from all of the books of the month for any given calendar year, you have a a book of the year award yes. that you give out. Yes. As you all know, since Daryl is the proud recipient of the 2010 year, this is a misprinted promotional uh, item. <laughs> Some of the other books of the year being Mary Ruart's Healing Our World, The Politics of Obedience, and Tom DiLorenzo's The Real Lincoln. This is my own personal business card, so we can produce business cards that have actual trade value. You know, it's got the silver embedded in the actual card. And it's got a QR code. What does the QR code do? The Q this QR code will 
you know, you scan it with your phone, it'll pop up our website, and at the top of it will be, here's what this card is, and here's what its value is. And, and underneath that, and, you know, it'll, it'll have what all the cards are and what their value is. And then the other one down here uh, goes to the Silver Calculator app, which allows you to have on your smartphone uh, the ability to do the calculations like, you know, how many cards are worth this much and uh, it, it does the regular uh, silver coins, the bullion, the pre-64 U.S. currency. I think they've added Canadian currency, maybe they... Uh, Canadian, a lot of the uh, Mexican silver coins, oh, nice. the Libertad, yeah. uh, the uh, French, the Franks, they've got the Franks oh, on there. Right. I did, I did uh, that. So basically all of the major silver yeah. that anyone would be interested in buying and selling and trading. Including Shire Silver. And of course, you know, we do accept Bitcoins for the Shire Silver. We've gotten several orders uh, for that. So people who are a little unsure about Bitcoins can easily convert them into sound money by buying some Shire Silver. Okay, so Ron, tell me what's going on here. Well, we're going to be producing some money, actual manufacturing of the Shire Silver currency. Step one, um, we get these uh, printed at a professional printer, okay. and they come uh, already with the corners cut, but we have to cut out the middle, which depending on what the denomination is, it's like a half inch circle, or a one inch circle, or an oval, or a square. Okay. Uh, this one is the easiest one to do. Okay. Um, which, of course, you know, you got to give an economist the easy one. All right. Well, so, <laughs> so first you need to punch the hole. Yeah, but, but I mean, you, you got to give me an example. Like, sure. I, I don't, I've never used it. Otherwise. Well, you, all right. So you just you stick it in and squeeze the the handle and try to get it from this way. So you're saying I want it to be like that? Exactly, yeah. Center and all the way inserted. All right, that's about as far as it goes. Yep. And it's reasonably centered. Yeah. And you're saying go ahead? Yeah, go ahead and squeeze that. Wait, hold on, okay. Hold on, I want to be super precise now. Yeah, yeah, it is good to be as good. You know, there's a little bit of slop that can happen. Okay. Okay, so now you've got the card ready to go. All right. And grab one piece of the laminate material. Okay. And flip it open. It's like a book. From yeah, there you go. Okay. Stick the card in there. This way. Yep. All right. Try to get it centered so that there's enough laminate around the edge. It's okay. And grab one piece of the silver that's been pre-measured. It's already been verified okay. accurate weight, okay. and insert it into the card how, how? so that it goes on the back side. Like this? Yeah. Okay. Although it's easier to see when you flip the card over. Okay. There you go. Okay. And try to center it and make it look as nice as you can, but... Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be right now. All right, I'm set. Okay, and then wrap it in the protective sleeve. Like so? Yep. And pass it through the machine. The machine will grab it okay. and slide it through. Uh, fr the, yeah, that way. So this one? Yep. The, the folded edge first. All right. All right. Would it be accurate to say it's showing people how to make their own currency? Yes. All right. Is it grabbing? How do I know? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's got it. Oh my gosh. Wow, all right. And any second now, it'll be coming out the other side. There it is. And it's done. So, yeah, just grab it and pull it out of the sleeve. And we'll see how bad you messed up. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. All right, show the camera. All right, everybody, there you go. 
She's a beauty. Yeah. And then wrap it in one of the protective sleeves. Okay. And then feed it through the folded edge first. Ah. And it'll grab it and pull it through. And when you get good at it, you can do uh, one card preparation in the amount of time it takes for one card to go through. I see. Yeah. So you can keep the machine running at 100%. Do you ever get tired, you ever get tired of doing it? I mean, oh, yes. Yeah, I bet. Right. Do you have assistants at all? Or? I have hired some people yeah. on a temp basis. Um, when you get those $4,500 orders. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, or most of the time, I just do it myself. And you sit there for All right, hours. here we go. Yes. Money. A near perfect job. <laughs> It's beautiful, isn't it? Thank you. It's fabulous. It's so creative. And you great. may keep that one. That's Thank yours. Thank you very much. Yeah. This is great entrepreneurship. You are Patrick Barron. Yes. You ran for Congress in Massachusetts as an independent right. uh, against a seven-term incumbent. Yes. Uh, was that incumbent defeated, or is he still in Congress <laughs> yeah, as best. part of the like 90% that are consistently reelected? Yeah, he's part of the 90%. One is Massachusetts and heavily Democratic, so the odds are in his favor to begin with. What I came up with in, throughout the campaign is how the money flows within Washington. It creates gridlock. It basically, members of Congress pay fees to the party for the committee assignments, and in return for that, they get sponsorship on bills and things like that that help them campaign to get reelected. So basically, it's a pay-to-play system. And if you don't support the system, if you don't pay into your party, they don't promote you onto committees, you don't get legislation, you can't use the DNC, and you won't get reelected. So it's an openly transparent pay-to-play system. And I have a website called DefineTheMachine.com, which kind of walks through the history from 1996 through today of how that works. Do you think Washington can be reformed? Uh, or should we just completely abolish the federal government and have 50 separate nations? No, I, I think it can be reformed. I think it can be reformed. I think this is a good step in the process. That basically, it won't be reformed as long as we're bribing each other. You know, everybody says they need campaign finance reform, but 50% of what they fundraise, they're using to bribe other people. So if they could just stop bribing each other and function as independents, if you had 535 independent representatives, you would pull towards the middle and find moderation. But the system is designed to so I think it can be reformed. I think this might help. That's why I'm pushing it. And you guys are with Anti-War New England? Yes. Uh, Facebook page. Uh, we're trying to support Antiwar.com. And uh, this is the idea is my wife uh, wants to coordinate local anti-war protests and letter writing campaigns, anything that would actually occur in New Hampshire so that people don't have to travel to New York to do a protest. Okay. So if anybody's interested in anti-war activities, check out our Facebook page, Anti-War New England.